Are you ready to play the hero and become the star in your own movie? Are you prepared to embrace your superpowers and become the hero that you actually are and become your own salvation? Are you ready for me to download the spiritual work required? These are the gifts of the Spirit. In 1 Corinthians 12, now about the gifts of the Spirit, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, somehow or other, you were influenced and led astray to mute idols. Therefore, I want you to know that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says, Jesus be cursed, and no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. Let's quickly define what the word pagan actually is, or what pagan is in the Bible. When Christianity became generally accepted in the towns and cities of the empire, paganist was used to refer to a villager who continued to worship the old gods. Christians used this term for anyone not of their faith or of the Jewish faith. The word in the Old English for such a person was what is now known as heathen. In other words, a pagan is somebody who still practices magic and understands their spiritual power, and they take control over their environment. You know that when you were pagan, somehow or other, you were influenced and led astray to mute idols. Oh, the irony here. Mute idols. Well, what is idols? False idols. What is a major sin that is still practiced today? Idolatry. Jesus Christ didn't come to instill a new religion. He came to free us from religion. And what's happened in our world today or the modern construct of church and state is they've built an empire based upon worshiping Jesus Christ. But in order for you to be free and understand who you truly are, you must separate Jesus from the Christ and understand that the Christ is within. And you are in control over your environment and you can perform miracles. You are the magic. Therefore, I want you to know that no one is speaking by the Spirit of God says, Jesus be cursed, and no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Who is Lord? Lord is short for Lordship. Lordship is the kingdom of men. When we give somebody a Lordship, like Lord Rothschild or Lord Rockefeller or the different Lords that are part of an estate in, in, in terms of a throne created by the authority of man. Lord, in this instance, is not necessarily about God Most High. This is about those that we worship in this physical reality, and so there's our false idols. But what I love about this scripture is this is teaching you how to become the Lord and the creator of your own reality by way of spiritual gifts. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in everyone, it is the same God at work. You guys, I'm set on a mission to prove how the Clares and the Chakras and Reiki, Jesus was a Reiki master. I mean, I'm, I'm really set to use the scripture to prove who you truly are. Did you hear what we just read here? There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. My friends, you are the Lord, and the different kinds of service are the different kind of gifts that we all have. Some of us are born with different superpowers, but I do believe by the power of oneness, we can learn how to brace all nine clairs and become one in unity Christ consciousness, as Jesus Christ did and demonstrated. There are different kinds of works working, but in all of them and in everyone, it is the same God at work. Christ is within. I started with Claire Empathy and I'm developing my clairvoyance now, and I have claircognizance. Next, I'll work on clairsalience, clairsentience, clairaudience, because those are our superpowers that give us the capabilities of being powerful creators and becoming the hero of our own movies. I'm frankly the voice with Let's All Become Heroes. Follow for more. Movie stars, unite! So now you recognize you're the creator of your own reality, and you're ready to play the hero in your own movie. But are you truly ready to embrace your superpowers and do the spiritual work required to become the rescuer and provider of your own salvation. Cool, let's get to work. Continuing in 1 Corinthians 12, verse seven. Now to each one, the manifestation. Did you hear what I just said? Manifestation. See, even manifestation is in the Bible, just like the clairs, the chakras, Reiki, all of it. The manifestation of the spirit is given for the common good, common good. To one there is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom, to another a message of knowledge, by means of the same Spirit. Wisdom starts in the heart chakra, where heart consciousness lives. This is where we understand and discern between love and unconditional love, righteousness and wickedness. And the spiritual gift here is clear empathy. So where one is being gifted with a message of wisdom, another a message of knowledge. Knowledge is the translation from the Greek word gnosis. When one comes into knowing, they have clear cognizance. By means of the same spirit, in other words, Christ is within, and the mission that we're all on is attaining Christ consciousness. To another faith by the same spirit, to another gifts of healing by that one 
one spirit, the truth of oneness in Christ consciousness. When it said there to another the gift of healing, we have to understand that each of these clairs are our own superpowers to first heal ourselves. And when we are capable healing masters of our own energy and understanding how to be one in unity Christ consciousness, then we are capable and prepared to help others learn how to heal themselves. To be a healer is to help coach people into doing their own spiritual work and become healers themselves. And these are the miraculous powers to another miraculous powers. This is the magic. There are some people that have clear clear tangency is a matter of putting their hands like a Reiki master and taking away someone's pain. But the problem is if those people believe that they need this external salvation, that pain will return unless they understand how to truly heal themselves. To another prophecy. This is clairvoyance, guys. To another distinguishing between spirits, the power of disturbance discernment to another speaking in different kinds of tongues this is in the throat chakra and this is the power of clear audience for when one has connected the heart consciousness to the mind consciousness by way of the throat chakra the words that they speak are not their own all these are the work of one and the same spirit and he distributes them to each one just as he determines now don't let that word he throw you off because this is again a doctrine that is teaches us from a patriarchy which is about vice, false idols and idolatry unfortunately but we're freeing from we're, we're being freed from this in an esoteric mythos wisdom understanding that the profound wisdom here is the he is referring to the Christ consciousness this is your state of conscious consciousness that you have when you embrace your clairs and become the super powerful creator of your own reality this is the secret wisdom of 1 Corinthians 12. And now you're ready to be the movie star that you are and become the hero and the lead actor in your whatever, your comedy, your drama, your thriller, your suspense. It's your movie, dude. Create what you want. I'm Frankly the Voice, but let's all become heroes. Follow for more. Okay, movie star, let's embrace your hero role in your new feature film. But first, repeat after me. Frank, I am learning how to embrace my superpowers because I am a hero. Seriously, did you say it? Let's continue in 1 Corinthians 12, verse 12 through 14. Just as a body, though one, may have many parts, but all in the many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. <laughs> Guys, this is some profound, deep, esoteric wisdom here. Let's get into it. Just as a body, though one. Gang, this has a literal translation, right? Your body, right? The body is one it's whole in its entirety one body but then each person outside of you another body you are meant to be one with that body as well because through the power of unity christ consciousness we are one so again the body has many parts right and that's important to embrace the fact and understanding that all the different parts make up the wholeness of the one body the literal translation but all its many parts form one body so it is with christ each person reading this passage is a body and we all have Christ within us. And that unification, that understanding that the Christ, the source of God, energy within each of us connects us all. So we are also the multiple parts of the one body. This is a spiritual body of Christ consciousness. For we were all baptized by one spirit so as to form one body. Now, I don't want you to be confused by modern day water baptism baptism is simply understanding that the spirit of Christ is within and when you are truly healing yourself and learning how to manipulate and manifest the frequencies of energy that you wish to be your higher self then you understand your baptism and the idea is to stay clean in other words choose a path of righteousness over the path of wickedness that returns you to a lower vibrational energy state which is the victim mentality in other words the hell state the hell consciousness one spirit as to form one body whether Jews or Gentiles Again, the one spirit to form the one body is the spiritual body of our unity Christ consciousness. Slave or free, and we were all given the one spirit to drink. Did you watch my video explaining how God is water, Christ is water, the Holy Spirit is water? This is the drink that we take. When you accept the spirit of truth within and you choose to be the hero that you are by embracing the superpowers that we've discussed on previous videos, then you are drinking the water. Water is God. Even so, the body is not made up of one part, but of many. I'm a part of the body. You're a part of the body. She's a part of the body. He's a part of the body. All of this is the wholeness and the understanding, the understanding, the esoteric, deep spiritual, profound wisdom of unity Christ consciousness. I'm frankly the voice with Let's All Become Heroes. Follow for more. We're going to continue to break down 1 Corinthians 12, and it's about to get real. Well, it's about to get real.
you're the star of your own movie now. You've accepted the lead role in your action film, and now you're ready to embrace your superpowers and become the lead hero that you are. Let's continue breaking down 1 Corinthians 12 so that you can better understand how even Jesus Christ or the followers of Christ were consciously aware of the clairs, the chakras, and they were ultimately heroes by way of understanding the esoteric teachings of Christ. Make sure you check all my other videos out about becoming the movie star so that you can get a better understanding of the previous parts of this scripture where we identified where it actually talks about the clairs in this scripture. And in the last video I made, we learned more about the body. And now we're going to talk about you as a whole body. And then we're going to break down the body by way of parts and get a better understanding of what this wisdom is actually trying to teach us. You ready? We left off here, even so the body is not made up of one part, but of many. And we are concluding here in 1 Corinthians 12, 15. Now, if the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body. It would not, for that reason, stop being a part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body. It would not, for that reason, stop being a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? Now, if the foot should say, because I am not a hand, how many denominations do we really need in Christianity? Because we have 40,000. Do we really need that many? I don't want to get into that. Instead, let's think about the foot and the hand as maybe Judaism versus Islam, or it could be Buddha versus Christianity. It could be Hinduism, Taoism. It could be all the different aspects of religion further from denominations, but understanding now that we know that Christ is within and we are the body of Christ, it doesn't matter who you are, where you come from, what color your skin, gender, any of that stuff, have sexual orientation, because each of us have God within and thus we are all a part of this spiritual body. And did you catch this part? If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole birdie, body were an ear, where would the sense of smell now, be? Now eye is of course symbolism for sight and ear is of course symbolism for hearing. Now ears are a part of the hearing, which is the clear audience, which is connected to the throat chakra. When we speak and hear, that's all clear audience. And then sight is actually affiliated with the third eye. It's talking about that eye, okay? That's the eye that we actually see with when we're actually speaking and talking and dealing with God, which connects us to the whole body, right? So that sight is in the third eye chakra, and that is clairvoyance. So already we're dealing with clear audience and clairvoyance again, just as examples of distinguishing how each of those superpowers are still a part of one whole body, the spiritual body. And this is pow powerful esoteric wisdom here. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? In other words, hearing that that superpower is specifically important to encompass the whole body. So if the whole, um, everybody's superpower was clairvoyance, we'd be in a state of lack when it came to clairaudience. So we need those that are the hearers and we need those that have sight. Thus we need the eyes to see and the ears to hear. Sound familiar? But in fact, God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. Once again, there's a literal translation here, as well as a metaphysical or, or a, a, a metaphorical translation. Of course, the eyes and the ears being a part of the physical body and the entire body needing all of the different parts to encompass or become the whole entire body. But if we refer to each denomination or even different religion in the world that all have different esoteric understandings of God being within, which is the golden rule throughout the world in every corner of the world, then we can understand that God has put us all exactly where we are and given us each spiritual gifts so that some of us can be the eyes, some of us can be the ears, some of us can be you know, whatever it is. And that's how we embrace our superpowers and encompass the whole body as one by leaning on one another in our, where we lack so that we can spiritually grow and become one, the strongest one in the power of Christ consciousness, where we depend on the people with sight as in clairvoyance, and we depend on the people with hearing as in clairaudience, and we depend on the people with claircognizance, which is, you know, the Christ consciousness, the gnosis, and we depend on people with clairsentience and clair empathy and clair tangency and clair gustance and all of the clairs encompass the entire body. This is going to continue to get fun, guys. Please go on this ride with me. My name is Frank Lee DeVoice from Let's All Become Heroes. Follow for more. All right, so you're the hero in your movie now. You've embraced your superpowers or at least consciously aware of the different clairs that you can develop into your superpowers. We're halfway through the body. We're rapidly approaching the climax. So let's get into it. Continuing along in 1 Corinthians 12, we are now down to verse 21. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. 
On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable, and the parts that we think are less honorable we treat with special honor, and the parts that are unpresentable are treated with special modesty. While our presentable parts need no special treatment, but God has put the body together, giving greater honor to the parts that lacked it. The eye cannot say to the hand, I do not need you. Again, understanding that the eye is the, those with clairvoyance, and the hand would be somebody with clairtangency or Reiki healers. We need each other. We make up the body because the body is a spiritual connection of unity, Christ consciousness, the power of one. So can you see how this is talking about unity and ending division? Hating somebody for being something you're not or you lack is ridiculous. Think about the modern construct of our society and the amount of division we have in a dualistic reality that is created by those that have lordship and power over the church and state. Simply put, the eye cannot say to the hand, I do not need you. We are each spiritual guides for one, no one another in the power of oneness. Now we're going to get into some deep thinking here. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable, and the parts we think are less honorable we treat with special honor. Are you familiar with the passage, the meek shall inherit the earth? What does that mean? What does meek stand for? Is meek weak? Is meek poverty? Is meek um, incapable? What do we do with those that are mentally ill, right? Do we mistreat those? Do we falsely label mental health disorders, when these could actually be spiritual power and blessings. We honor the things that need the most attention, but we have to be mindful of the type of attention we give these potential superpowers. When we condemn these people, we are keeping them limitless in their power. Check that, make that limited. And this is profound right here. And the parts that we think are less honorable, we treat with special honor. Think about that for a moment. Oh, the irony. Think about the people that we put in power and we give them special recognition, special attention. I don't want to offend anybody, but at the risk of offending everybody, I have to be honest with what this scripture is actually teaching me. For the, for the example of the Pope or the kings and the queens, the man-made kingdoms, presidents, politicians, senators, you know, sometimes celebrities. These people are less honorable. They are doing things that are not of Christ. In fact, and often, cases this is the spirit of the antichrist and so this whole thing is flipped around inside out and we are treating those who are less honorable with special honor how can we allow people to divide us and then worship them by way of the church and state we are not a dualistic people we are all one and by way of the holy trinity when we flee from a dualistic reality we become that one body embracing all of our superpowers Accepting our brothers and sisters with clear audience, clear salience, clear sentience, clear cognizance, clear empathy, clear tangency, clear gustance, right? These are the different denominations, different churches, different religions throughout the world. When we come together by the power of unity, Christ consciousness, we can then overcome the authority and the false idols or idolatry in this world. While our presentable parts need no special treatment. Do you know why Jesus didn't attend to the 99 when the one sheep went away? Because that one sheep was the one sheep that recognized that 99 sheep were walking robotically into hell. And that one sheep intended to free itself from the collective societal construct that was condemning their spiritual growth. And that sheep had identified, you know, the reality of the powerful creator that each of us are. We need to be the one sheep. So this piece of scripture to me is speaking again, kind of flipped around where it says that while our presentable parts need no special treatment. So the society is basically running itself at this point. It's so many generations into this indoctrination and this dogma, and this doctrine, of false teaching and false, false idols and idolatry. And this, this you know, this, this, the, the construct thrives off of our sin. So the 99 are going to continue to obey and be obedient to their omnipotent, you know, external salvation. And so because that is the presentable parts, it is a system that feeds itself. Whereas that one sheep that walked away from the 99, that's the sheep that needs the most attention in a sense of the societal needs to pull that sheep back into the 99 so that they can be a part of a false idol construct. But if you understand that that one sheep is breaking away from the normalities in the society that doesn't fit the spiritual work that Christ intended to teach us all, embracing our superpowers, that one sheep is the Messiah. But God has put the body together, giving greater honor to the parts that lacked it. We're going to stop it right there and we'll make another video. God put the body together by way of all these different superpowers that each of us have. We are meant to be different, but the same. 
We are meant to have different special spiritual gifts, different life experience, different karmas, different egos, different perspectives. Ultimately, each of us have to have that life experience that leads us into the power of oneness, where we can truly accept and understand somebody for what we lack, what we don't understand. If we can just accept them and truly learn how to unconditionally love them, then we are walking in the body of Christ. That's the power of the unity Christ consciousness. I'm Frank Lee Voice with Let's All Become Heroes. Follow for more, you movie star. You know, I'm a really huge fan of yours. I absolutely love the movie you're making. You are a super powerful superstar. How about a quick round of applause? So in the last scene, we were talking about the climax, and you are now recognizing the end antagonist is trying to prevent you from becoming the one, one body, the unity Christ consciousness. We're going to continue in 1 Corinthians 12, verse 25, so that there should be no division in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. There's that word again, division. We are coming to the conclusion. Bum, bum, bum. The word division is meant to insinuate that there are others that are trying to prevent you from recognizing the significance of being the eye or the clairvoyant or being the ears, the clairaudience or being the claircognizant or being the clair empathy or being the clairgustance or the clairsalience or the clairsentience or the clairtangent. Okay, each of us are parts of the body. Right? And we're going to get into that here in a little bit, but the point of this is, is that those that are trying to divide us do not understand the superpowers of us coming together in unity Christ consciousness. And some are actually doing this on purpose because they do understand the superpowers of us coming together in unity Christ consciousness. So that there should be no division in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. We must come together because in order for us to be one or be the unity Christ consciousness that Yeshua ben Yosef, AKA Jesus Christ was teaching us about, that's, that's the kingdom of heaven. Heaven and hell are here now and coming together is our escaping the hell state. And we must be concerned for one another. We must embrace each other and love each other so that we can learn from one another and each of us do our spiritual work to become who we truly are. Some of us have clairvoyance. Some of us have claircognizance. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. This is talking about the spiritual body of humanity, guys. We can't have genocide taking place in Palestine and have, you know, a spiritual christed state of christ consciousness as a collective we just can't have it when we allow these things to happen when we pay taxes to support genocide we're not being godly and that's wicked that's the spirit of the antichrist thriving in this modern day construct and preventing us from being who we truly are one body one spiritual body in unity christ consciousness now you are the body of christ and each one of you is a part of it now each one of you when we break down and understand the different body parts being your superpower Embrace you, Claire's. Find out who you really are because you're needed in this fight. We must all come together and become one body. And your superpower is going to be significant in order for us to overcome the obstacles of the Antichrist spirit that's thriving in the world today. All right, we're officially in the conclusion now. Now, this is going to blow your mind. And God has placed in the church. You are the church, by the way. We're the vessel, right? So you're the church. First of all, apostles. Second, prophets. Third, teachers. Then miracles. Then gifts of healing of helping, of guidance, of different kinds of tongues. Now pay attention because I'm going to break this down for you by way of chakra and Claire's. Get ready for it. And God has placed the church first of all, apostles. This is the crown chakra. These are the chosen ones. These are the ones that are, you know, walking in Christ consciousness. Second, the prophets. These are the seers. These are the people that have the third eye chakra open. These are the ones that are having conversations with God and able to predict the future, if you will. So that's the third eye chakra. And these are the clairvoyant. Whereas this is the crown chakra and these are the claircognizant. And then we have the third teachers. The teachers are those with the voice and the hearing, the, those with eyes to see and ears to hear. They're capable of teaching the spirit of Christ. This is the throat chakra and this is clear audience. Then miracles. This takes place in the heart chakra. This is transmuting energy into unconditional love, recognizing the power of your discernment to enhance your spiritual transcendence and embracing the superpowers you are by way of magic. When you perform magic, you're performing miracles. Then gifts of healing. Now this is going to take place in your solar plexus chakra because your healing is what's important first and in order for you to get into your heart chakra and embrace 
your clear empathy, you have to first become the healer of your own body. This takes place in your solar plexus chakra. This is your power and identity. You must embrace who you truly are and recognize your authenticity by embracing your clairs. The solar plexus chakra, this is about feeling. This is when you're distinguishing the difference between intuition and impulse, right? So this is clairsentience. This could also be a little bit of clairgustance, clairsalience of helping, of guidance, and of different kinds of tongues. The tongues obviously would be a little bit more about speaking and understanding the throat chakra again. The guidance could be more about you recognizing and embracing your authenticity, which takes place in the sacral chakra, which is where you actually come to know who you are. This is your creative part of you know, the chakra system. And so this clear guidance is going to be similar to embracing your clear, clear empathy. Now get ready, because this is the important part. Now I actually believe though, like Yeshua ben Yosef today known as Jesus Christ actually did obviously encompass all nine clairs. He was the ascended master. He was the chosen one, the Messiah, the one sheep that walked away from the 99 and became the one and taught everybody how to become the one. Okay, so what's going to be said next is important. Are all apostles? No. Are all prophets? No. Are all teachers? No. Do all work miracles? No. Do all have gifts of healing? No. Do all speak in tongues? No. Do all interpret? No. Um, now eagerly desire the greater the greater gifts. This is understanding that each of these individuals that embrace these superpowers by coming together, we become that power of one. But I can't help but tell you, I have to tell you that you are capable of developing multiple clairs. You can become the one. And in that unity Christ conscious, that Christ conscious state where you have embraced other clairs, and you're starting to learn how to be clairvoyant, clair empathetic, clair cognizant, clair gustin, clair tangent, you know, clair salient, clair audient, all of those together make the Christ. If you can't, or you have a lack in one of those superpowers, then you want to learn from somebody else how to become that clairvoyant, clair cognizant, and so on and so forth. This is the secret esoteric teaching in 1 Corinthians 12 that teaches you how to embrace the chakra system, embrace your superpowers, understand your clairs, and become the hero that you truly are. I'm frankly the voice of Let's All Become Heroes. Follow for more. I can't wait to watch your next movie.